In today's video, we're going to take a look at handling keyboard adjustments to our layout, specifically the new way to update our layout when the keyboard appears and disappears. Before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe, you guys on the drill, let's open up Xcode and create a new project and talk about some keyboard layout. So I'm going to stick with the app template under iOS and let me creatively call this keyboard layout. We'll make sure to stick with Swift and UIKit is what we'll be working with today. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like, and we're gonna jump into the view controller. Now, as a preface, before I begin, traditionally the way we handle keyboard layout or the way we've done it so far is twofold. Either we use a stack view or we rely on a keyboard did show or did disappear notification. And when that notification used to appear, it would have information such as the keyboard animation duration and the keyboard frame. And we would use that frame to update either our constraints or frame based layout. Now, there was nothing wrong with that solution except for the fact that it was kind of annoying and, a, and pretty verbose. So as of iOS 15, Apple has introduced a new way to do things and it's way simpler and we're gonna do that new way today. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this code in our view controller and I've actually written out a pretty simple controller that I've pasted here. We'll talk through it and focus on the layout part just to not waste everyone's time. Now we've got a pretty standard view controller. We've got a text view inside of here with translates auto resizing masks into constraints set to false. Similarly, we have a submit button as well. View did load just adds those sub views and sets up an action for that button. Now, when the view appears, we uh, become the first responder on the text view, which will prompt the keyboard. When the button is tapped, we get rid of the keyboard. And then of course we have a function to add constraints. So let me go ahead and give this a run and let's see what this whole thing looks like right now. Right now, it looks like we've got that keyboard appearing. We don't see our layout of our text view or button because we haven't added a constraints, but let's go ahead and add those. So the first thing we're gonna want to constrain is our text view. So I'm gonna say our text views leading constraint is going to be a constraint equal to the view, the safe area layout guide leading constraints. And we're gonna also add a constant between all of our constraints just to make things look a little more padded. So we'll do that one like so, 10. And let me go ahead and copy and paste this four times. We'll do our trailing next. So I'll make this one trailing, this one trailing. We'll have top and we'll have top here as well, 10 from that. And finally, we'll have the bottom. Once we have this, let's give it a run, make sure our text view is appearing, and then we'll talk about the button and the keyboard aspect of this. So we see our text view is certainly appearing. We actually see that the keyboard's already covering things. And the way I know that is because we added a 10 point uh, buffer from the bottom here, but it's using the bottom of the view, which is underneath the keyboard. So the problem here is if I started typing and right now the keyboard disappeared because I have my physical keyboard on my laptop attached, we can't see the text anymore and that's a little ridiculous. So what I'm gonna do here is now lay out the submit button. So we'll say submit leading, and let me actually just do a simpler version here. So we'll say with anchor is a constraint equal to a constant of perhaps 300. We'll also go ahead and do a height anchor respectively, like so. And we also want this button to be centered horizontally in the X anchor, or the X axis, I should say. And this will be a constraint equal to view center x anchor if we spell it correctly there we are and finally this is where the magic happens so traditionally we want to pin the text view to the top of the submit button but we're not quite going to do that and actually let me add the bottom anchor before i forget to so the bottom anchor here will be a constraint equal to the view safe area layout guide bottom anchor constant negative 10. So traditionally we would pin the text views bottom. So this guy right here, I'll line break it to focus on it to the bottom of the uh, submit button. So let's actually do that and see what that looks like and what actually happens in the traditional sense. So we'll go ahead and do that. Hopefully I didn't make any typos and we see our text view like so. So we see our text view like so, but we see the button is out of frame and we can't actually see it. And it makes sense, right? Because our keyboard is overlapping it, but we've said make the bottom of the button 
uh, pinned to the views safe area layout guide bottom. So what we actually want to do is use the new layout guide that was added in iOS 15 and it's super creatively called keyboard layout guide. And we can say bottom, go ahead and give it a run. Let's try that one more time, bottom and give it a run. And what you'll notice is when I see it get on the simulator and I tap on the actual uh, text view and the keyboard pops up, the submit button should move up. Now it looks like something is off here because the submit button is actually overlapping. So let's see what part needs to change. So we're saying that the submit button's bottom anchor should be to the keyboard layout guide's top anchor. That makes sense. And we're going to subtract 10. Now we want the text views bottom to be the submit button's top anchor so we don't overlap it. Go ahead and tweak those and give it a run. And now we see that the submit button's at the bottom. And when I go ahead and tap in here to get the keyboard popping up, you'll see that the button has moved up and our uh, text view size has adapted to the keyboard being present. Now, of course, I can type in here a whole lot of nonsense. And let's see if I can just get away with doing a bunch of these. Won't make sense, but we can see as I type. And once I hit this button to dismiss, our text view expanded, keyboard dismissed, and we can also have this keyboard and the layout be dynamic. For example, the emoji keyboard here has a taller height than the standard QWERTY keyboard, and everything is adaptive. So the beauty of this new keyboard layout guide right here that was introduced in iOS 15 is our layout code is much more simple in terms of our auto layout constraints. We don't need to set up notification observance for uh, dismissal, for appearance, and all that nonsense. And the beauty of this is also is, uh, you know, because it is in fact auto layout, we can adapt to, you know, portrait, landscape, the whole nine yards, whatever device you are working on. So that is a keyboard layout guide constraint in a nutshell. That's all I've got for you guys today. Pretty simple, but pretty effective new tweak. I wasn't actually aware this was added pretty recently until I came across a WWDC video. Let me know in the comments down below if you were aware and if you use it already. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you are new here. Keep the channel going and growing together. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.